On a Wednesday morning, Dr. Pustai's contract was canceled, his data was withdrawn, his team was dismantled, they never implemented the protocols. In fact, they told him if he spoke at all about his research, he would be sued. They went through a whole process to try and trash his reputation to promote the biotechnology industry, and what he had discovered was very interesting. You see, he fed rats a potato that was genetically engineered with a gene that produces an insecticide. But he had tested the insecticide over and over again on rats and knew it was safe. In fact, in his study, he fed some rats the natural potato with spiked with the insecticide and others eating the genetically engineered potato that produced the insecticide from within each cell. But only those that ate the GM potato, the genetically modified potato, got these illnesses and got this sickness. So it's the way the poison was being delivered. Exactly. It was the process of creating, it was the process of genetically engineering the potato that caused the problem, and that was what his great concern for him was, because he was aware that the same process was used to create the soy and corn and, and tomatoes. And, and it was eating market. their livers. Folks, you know, you don't drink Jack Daniels because you don't want to die of liver failure. Hell, you eat potatoes and corn, you get it. I mean, this is, this is serious. Now, in addition to, to his work, um, we're finding that the Roundup persists for a long time on the field after it's sprayed. Of course, Monsanto tried to say it was biodegradable, but two courts of law, one here and one in France, told, uh, demanded and ordered them to remove it from their label. Well, what now, about tap water? We know it gets on the water table. Jeffrey, stay there. We're going to have five minutes left with you on the other side because you're on the road with your film. Your film's coming out in October. I can't wait to see it. He's an amazing author and filmmaker. Jeffrey M. Smith. I'm Alex Jones. Author of Seeds of Deception, Jeffrey M. Smith, both books available at InfoWars.com. Uh, just hundreds and hundreds of these studies of the sterilization, the reduction in fertility. I saw headlines in the London Guardian this week and last week, Jeffrey, where it was reported that the so-called government watchdogs now in England, uh, the ones investigating GMO, it turns out, are on the GMO payroll just like the flu vaccine crowd, and are basically lying. So they are beginning to get caught uh, with their hands in the genetic engineering uh, bioethicist eugenics jar. Oh, yeah. In fact, some of the independent people on a, on a panel actually resigned because it was another one of those takeovers. I've actually traveled to 32 countries speaking about GMOs, and I see all over the world it's Monsanto's own people that are installed into the positions to approve Monsanto's own products, just like in the U.S. But I want to say it's not all depressing news. You see, in Europe, when Dr. Pustai was finally able to speak seven months after he was, he discovered, he was shut down, um, it all hell broke loose in the media. 750 articles were written in a single month. Within 10 weeks, the tipping point of consumer rejection was achieved, and within a single week, virtually every major food company committed to stop using genetically modified ingredients in their European brands. But that was because the Europeans were then informed by the mainstream media. In the U.S., it was described as one of the ten most underreported events of the year by Project Censor. Just like Fox wasn't allowed to report uh, on the genetically, you know, engineered growth hormone. Exactly. They were, they were silenced with two threats from Monsanto's attorney promising, quote, dire consequences, unquote, to Fox TV and Rupert Murdoch. So what happened is... In the United States, the same companies that remove GM ingredients from Europe and from Japan still sell it to us here. All we need is about 5% of U.S. shoppers to start avoiding brands that contain GM ingredients. It'll turn these things into a pure marketing liability with zero consumer benefits, and we will see a tipping point. Now, the good news is it's already happening. The fastest-growing claim among store brands in 2009 was GMO-free. Supermarket News, a big journal that, that predicts supermarket trends and food trends, predicted that this year would show an unprecedented upsurge of consumer awareness and concern about GMOs. October happens to be non-GMO month. 10-10-10 is non-GMO day. And our, the sales of our non-GMO shopping guide and the views on our site at non-GMOshoppingguide.com, which help people m maneuver around the GM ingredients to buy the non-GM brands, they're skyrocketing. So what's happening right now, and I've been traveling all over the United States for seven years. I travel about 165 days a year. I'm seeing an unprecedented upsurge of activism, but not just energy, but intelligence. A lot of people who realize the details now, they're quoting back to me things that I said years ago. They're expanding on it. They're reading about it. And so right now we have the perfect opportunity to create a tipping point. And so on our website at, at the at responsible tech
Technology.org, which is our nonprofit institute for responsible technology, we have a campaign for healthier eating in America. We have a link to our shopping guide. We have free videos online, free podcasts, a free newsletter that you can sign up for to get it once Well, that's another month. great point. They're talking about health care cost off the charts. Meanwhile, on record, the GMO food we're eating is frying our livers, frying our uh, kidneys. I mean, we've got the studies right here just devastating people. You know, I'm talking to some patients this week who, when they got off of GMOs, their symptoms disappeared very, very quickly. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. And, and the old, I just, you asked me earlier about the human studies, and unfortunately there's only one published human feeding study, and they found that the genes inserted into soybeans can transfer into the DNA of the bacteria living inside our intestines and continue to function long after we stop eating the GMO. So it's not good news, but they, the U.K. government just stopped any follow-up, so we don't know really how dangerous or prevalent it is. All right. Well, uh, Jeffrey Smith, uh, we really appreciate you coming on with us. We look forward to speaking to you again in the future. God bless you, my friend. Just, Thank you, Alex. This is Life and Death Information. We'll be right back. Stay with us.